Welcome to the Macmillan Report. I'm Marilyn Wilkes, your host, and our guest is Thad Dunning, an associate professor of political science at Yale University. Professor Dunning studies comparative politics, political economy, and methodology. His book, Crude Democracy, Natural Resource Wealth and Political Regimes, contrasts the democratic and authoritarian effects of natural resource wealth. His current work on ethnic and other cleavages draws on field and natural experiments and qualitative field work in Latin America, India, and Africa. Professor Dunning has written on a range of methodological topics, including econometric corrections for selection effects and the use of natural experiments in the social sciences. Today we'll talk with him about a study he recently completed on voting in Mali. Welcome, Professor Dunning. Thank you so much. Your paper um, that you've recently written is, uh, the title is quite a mouthful, Cross-Cutting Cleavages and Ethnic Voting, an Experimental Study of Cousinage in Mali. Um, what is Cousinage, first off, and where can we find Mali? Very good question. Well, Mali is in the western Sahel zone of sub-Saharan Africa. It's mm -hmm. to the north of the Ivory Coast and to the east of Senegal. It's a beautiful country with, with all kinds of uh, interesting features. Mm -hmm. um, and it was in particular the site of the Mali Empire, um, which wa was consolidated under the reign of Sunjata Keita in the 13th century and was one of the stronger of the pre-colonial African empires. It extended west to Senegal, to the Guinea, um, to, to Guinea and the Gambia. Uh, and a little bit south into Northern Ivory Coast um, as well. And uh, one of the features of, of uh, Sunjata Keita's rule was the institutionalization, if you will, of the social practice of cousinage. What is cousinage? Mm -hmm. Cousinage is a kind of social institution that links Malians with particular last names or patronyms. Uh, into uh, um, uh, into a, a set of series of social relations, and uh, often there's joking uh, that occurs between cousins. So if mm -hmm. a, someone named Keita in the streets of Bamako, which is Mali's capital, uh, meets uh, some a stranger perhaps in the street named Kulabali, um, because the Keita and the Kulabali are so-called joking cousins, um, they may exchange a series of, of pleasantries. Um, and this link between joking cousins or fictive cousins. Um, which the French call cousinage, uh, is, is, was the object of what, um, what we were studying in Mali. I see. So what is the premise in your paper? What are you arguing in it? Well, um, there's um, a puzzle in Mali, which is that Mali uh, is very ethnically heterogene heterogeneous. There are 11 or 12 major linguistically defined ethnic groups in Mali. But ethnicity doesn't seem to play a very important political role. So ethnicity isn't um, salient in terms of party platforms, mm -hmm. and um, individual ethnicity is not a strong predictor of how people vote. And this is a puzzle in sub-Saharan Africa, where many, many other countries, in fact, have more, a more salient role for, for ethnicity. So this is the puzzle that's, uh, that's interesting in Mali, and a hypothesis that's been uh, that, but that's been proposed to explain the lack of salience of, of ethnicity is, is precisely cousinage. And cousinage relations are a specific instance of a more general phenomenon, which is, has often been of interest to, to political scientists, which is um, cross-cutting. Uh, it's an example of a cross-cutting cleavage, which is the other part of the mouthful mm -hmm. in the title that you mentioned. And what is a cross-cutting cleavage? A cross-cutting cleavage is a dimension of interest or identity uh, along which members, um, people who are members of the same group on a different dimension may be members of different groups. So think about social class and ethnicity mm -hmm. um, as, as one potentially cross-cutting cleavage in, in, in another setting. In Mali, cousinage is a, is a cleavage that cross-cuts social class because people who are members of the same ethnic group may or may not be, be joking cousins, and people who are members of two different ethnic groups may in fact be uh, may in fact be joking cousins. And so on this hypothesis, cousinage may be a dimension of uh, a kind of social relationship that crosscuts mm -hmm. um, ethnicity and helps to explain the limited salience of ethnicity in, in social and maybe even political life in Mali. And this is a hypothesis that's been advanced casually and formally by um, diplomats. In fact, if you go to the U.S. Department of State website, it, it attributes the lack of ethnic conflict in Mali 
um, at least in part to the presence of this social institution, Cousinage. And it was um, the object of study for uh, serious anthropologists at the, in the first half of the 20th century, um, names people like Radcliffe Brown, study joking kinship, Marcel Mauss, um, other uh, luminaries of, in, of anthropology studied joking kinships around the world, and Cousinage in Mali in particular. Uh, what we wanted to do in the study was to assess whether there's some relation, political relationship um, mm -hmm. between, um, in particular, a relationship between cousinage and, and vote choice. Okay. Prior to this paper, you wrote a book called Crude Democracy. Um, the, was the research that you did for that book, um, did that um, give way to the idea of the research you're doing in Mali? What, how did you end up in Mali? Well, crude democracy might seem like a very uh, dissimilar kind of topic mm -hmm. because that book is about how natural resource wealth affects political regimes. And there's an idea uh, in the political science literature and among in the popular press mm -hmm. that, that natural resources promote authoritarianism. And there are lots of examples of a, a resource-rich uh, authoritarian states like in the Middle East and in the Gulf states and so on. Um, and what I tried to do in that book was argue that actually natural resources could have conditional effects. In some conditions, they might well promote authoritarianism, mm -hmm. but in other kinds of conditions, they, they, they could have more democratizing effects. And so it might seem very, very dissimilar. On the other hand, what, what the book was really about is uh, relationships between particular groups of citizens, in that book, between relationships between the rich and the poor, and how a kind of economic dimension um, cross-cut in a way or blunted the, 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 the class conflict that might otherwise ensue um, in very unequal societies. And so the argument was that uh, oil resources, oil rents in the mm -hmm. jargon, provide a source of revenue that, uh, that funds public spending without um, forcing the state to, um, to impose redistributive taxes. Um, so it was about oil, but it was really about social relations, in particular relations between classes. So I think this, um, this idea about how different cleavage dimensions or uh, um, dimensions of interest or identity relate to one another and shape political outcomes is basically uh, what, what, I've, what I've been studying mm -hmm. um, for a long time, and this is in a, in a sort of different manifestation. Mm -hmm. um, I taught a class here at Yale on ethnic politics and comparative perspective and had a very talented undergraduate in my class who was interested in the phenomenon of cousinage and wrote a, a, an excellent term paper about it. So I suggested that um, we, s we study cousinage systematically and try to assess whether there really is an influence of cousinage on, on political behavior and then in turn on sort of broader political outcomes. Mm -hmm. So Lauren Harrison, who was Yale College class of uh, 2009, was my co-author on the paper mm -hmm. that uh, I'm talking about today. Okay. And for the paper, you developed an experimental research design unlike any others. How is it different? Well, what we did in, in Bamako, which is Mali's capital, mm -hmm. is, was to canvas all of the neighborhoods in Bamako and, and take a sample of participants mm -hmm. um, for our study. And then we showed um, participants videotaped political speeches. They were intended to be as much like a routine political speech that, that a Malian would encounter in any campaign, um, uh, any kind of legislative campaign. And uh, because last name or surname in Mali indicates both ethnicity and linkages in the Cousinage networks, uh, by manipulating or changing this, the, the last name of the politician in our speech, we could manipulate, we hoped, perceptions both of the politician's ethnicity and of, of his cousinage linkages to, um, to the subject who is watching the speech. And um, because uh, we were concerned, of course, that physical features and so on might indicate ethnicity, um, we used to tried this with a few different actors of, of many different ethnicities and in fact found that, um, that surname, that just by changing the surname we could quite dramatically shift people's perceptions of the, of the ethnicity of the politician as well as um, uh, 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 the placement of the politician in Cousinage networks. So uh, we basically had a range of what social scientists call treatment conditions, mm -hmm. which were defined by whether the politician was a cousin or not a cousin of the subject in the experiment or the participant in the experiment, and also whether the politician was a co-ethnic or non-co-ethnic. Mm -hmm. Then we had some control conditions, as, as social scientists and other scientists like to call them, where uh, no ethnicity about eth no information about ethnicity or cousinage links were, uh, was provided to the to the subject, and so that allowed us to assess how 
the relationship between the subject and the politician affected evaluations of the speech. So in a post-experiment survey or post-treatment survey, we asked subjects whether they would to what extent they would they felt they were likely to vote for the politician, um, and then a series of questions that tapped their impressions of the politician's likability, competence, intelligence, and so on. And so what we're interested in is whether changing the perceived ethnic relationship and Cousinage relationship between the subject and politician shifted around um, their evaluations of, mm -hmm. the, of the candidate. So what were your conclusions based on the research in Mali? Well, we found that Cousinage did shape the way that people saw politicians. So they were more favorable towards their joking cousins. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of the reasons for this may be that they tended to have more friends who were cousins. These are other kinds of uh, data that we, we gathered after the experiment from subjects. But um, in contrast to the idea that ethnicity is not salient, they also preferred their co-ethnics. Mm -hmm. um, and what we found, though, is that the penalty that politicians paid for being non-coethnics of, of voters or subjects in the experiment was made up uh, for by the positive boost of being a cousin. So the, the politicians who were rated the worst were non-coethnic, non-cousins, and the politicians who were rated the most favorably were cousins, coethnics. Um, politicians who were both cousins and coethnics of the subject, but um, but the effect of uh, going from being a co-ethnic co to a non-co-ethnic was about the same as going from being a cousin to a non-co-cousin, uh, non-cousin. So that non-co-ethnic cousins were uh, evaluations of non-co-ethnic cousins were indistinguishable statistically mm -hmm. from um, from evaluations of um, of cousins who were non-co-ethnics. Okay. So that's um, that was the basic finding that that kind of cross-cutting logic that, that has been alleged um, seemed, seemed to hold up in, in our experiment. And then the big question was, well, does this explain the, the puzzle that we, does this help explain the puzzle we set out to, to, to try to explain? And can your research design be useful in other settings? I think it can. Um, of course, there are some specific aspects of the Malian study mm -hmm. that uh, that were idiosyncratic. So one of the big challenges in doing this kind of this work in Mali was that we had to create a big matrix that, for every uh, subject last name, that is e every ethnicity, we subject ethnicity and last name that we expected to encounter in 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 the field while doing our research and going door to door from house to house in Bamako, we had to. Uh, create a big matrix which listed the names of politicians associated with, with each of those treatment conditions mm -hmm. that I mentioned. And so that kind of um, design challenge was idiosyncratic to Mali. But the idea of using political speeches and manipulating the relationship between subjects and po the politician along not just one but, but sort of multiple dimensions I think is exportable. And so I've been doing a series of studies actually using a very similar design in, uh, in India, most recently in India, South Africa, and Brazil as well. Um, th so those, in addition to Mali project, are, are projects that I've been working on while on recently on sabbatical from research sabbatical from teaching. And, uh, and there the design is very similar. So I think it does provide kind of a useful tool mm -hmm. for thinking about how different dimensions of interest or identity might shape uh, political preferences. Very good. Well, thank you so much for being here with us today and sharing some of your research. Thank you so much for having me. For more information about Professor Dunning and his work, please visit our website at yale.edu Macmillan Report. Be sure to join us again for another episode of the Macmillan Report, made possible through funding from the Whitney and Betty Macmillan Center for International and Area Studies at Yale.